Tia Rich, and I have the pleasure of directing the Contemplation by Design Summit. This evening is our eighth evening of the summit of a 10-day intensive opportunity to receive the teachings of wise people who guide us in the path of contemplation and help us to reflect on its merits and the unanswered questions of how to bring it into our modern lives. This evening, it is a very great honor to host Tenzing Wang Yao Rinpoche, who will bring to us his gift of sharing in a manner that Western minds can particularly respond to the teachings of the Bogon Tibetan Buddhist tradition. He is an author and teacher, and we're fortunate to have him living in the San Francisco Bay Area and being able to bring his wisdom to each of you and to the Stanford community tonight. He'll be giving a lecture as well as some guided meditation, and then at the end of the evening, we will have an open discussion of question and answer. So please give a warm welcome to Tenzing Wang Yao. Hello. Yeah, okay. Working. So, good evening, everybody. Very happy to be here this evening. Mm. So, I will... Uh, uh, the talk or the title of is the Tibetan uh, Dream Yoga and also Lucid Dreaming. So, I will just try to say a few words about it. Uh, so, how many of you are familiar with uh, any sense of this dream yoga, practice of night or anything? Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So this is the, the, the little talk that I'm going to do is based on a book that I published. It's called Tibetan Yogas of Dream and Sleep. So Tibetan Yogas of Dream and Sleep. It's a base on very ancient tradition of Tibet. Um, a few books, old books based on, and then also a little bit my own experiences and understanding of the night practice. So this practice is very much based on how to utilize our night as a way of personal development. So in our lifetime, probably anywhere from 25 to 30 years, we sleep, right? So 25 to 30 years we sleep, and, uh, and very often we don't know what's happening that time. And very often, very often it's not seen as very important, not sacred, not something that is very useful. Uh, people go to sleep, but just go to sleep, right? So for example, tonight everybody's going to go to sleep. How many of you are looking forward to go to sleep? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. But how many of you are planning to do something, stay late and steady, or do something, or planning, or something like that, watch something? Okay. So you see, you mo very often, we, for us, night is somehow, we go to sleep, but we don't look at really like something very look forward to, something very special, something very needed, something is very good for your uh, physical health, mental health, your well-being, personal development, spiritual development, we don't think that way. We just, we just go to sleep. We, don't, we just hopefully get good rest, good deep sleep, but not guarantee, but we go to sleep. So in Tibetan tradition, what is done is going to sleep, it's whole another understanding. It's like a, it's a sacred journey. It's a spiritual journey. It's a journey where a lot of possibility to understand oneself, uh, one's conditions, one's potentiality. So, uh, for example, every night when we go to sleep, we have many times a lot of negative dreams, sometimes we have positive dreams. Very often it is said that a positive dream turning into a more like a negative dream rather than negative dream turning into a positive dream. It's like it goes the other way around. More often we have nightmares than better dreams. Or, so it's like a very, very often in the night we go through a lot of uh, sleep deprivation, problems of sleep deprivation, 
uh, nightmares, so sleep, interrupted sleeps, uh, not getting enough rest. And when we have a dream, we don't, the dream influences us. For example, every night, if you, whatever dream you have, chances are these dreams will be impacting your, your, your mental health or your uh, mood or your, or your restfulness in the morning. You don't get good rest because you have uh, this long uh, nightmare of dreams, fearful dreams or something like that. So, so the dream yoga practice is very much about uh, really like a, it's a personal and spiritual development. So it's like a whole discovering a whole another time to practice, meditate. That makes sense? So usually we don't think about you go to sleep, in the morning you become a better person. <laughs> oh, you go to sleep in the morning, you're better psychologically, more healthier, or physically you're more healthier. In principle, yes. So in, if you really look the sleep in a right, positive way, in, the sleep is important, it's a sacred, utilizing how to uh, be conscious, how to have a lucid dream, how to change your nightmare into some, at least protect from it or change into something positive. So in the, in the morning, again, you don't have too long bad, bad experiences. So that's the idea here. It's the whole, uh, in Tibetan tradition, this use as a way of spiritual development. So it's not so much of psychological development. It is, of course, psychological development, but they don't look as more psychological that this is part of the spiritual development. So people practice that, that every night when people try and go to sleep, they practice. So, yeah, so, so what about lucid dream, for example? Lucid dream is one of the very important part of this practice. And uh, lucid dream means being conscious of your dream uh, as a dream while you're dreaming. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when you're dream when you're sleeping, you're dreaming. You're aware that it's a dream. So that's called lucid dreaming. So, and what does that do? It's when you're conscious, it's a dream. That means in dream you can do. In dream you don't have to worry. It's just a dream. This is how we think. It's a dream. Don't worry about it. And or it's a dream, and I can do anything. I can change. So I don't have to suffer continuously. I don't have to be stuck in one place continuously. I can change and transform and do many things. So that's the idea. But in order to do that, you have to have first lucid dream. I'll tell one story a student of mine shared. So she had a dream um, that I think in her life in generally, she was uh, uh, feeling a little bit unsafe. Uh, uh, threat, threatened, unsafe, not very secure in her life. That was kind of general sense of her life. But in dream, she was doing some dream yoga practices. And she had this dream where she, she was in the restaurant and, uh, and it was in the evening and she was a little bit worried. And then she, she was leaving the restaurant and she saw this, some a bunch of guy following her and she goes to the parking place they're following her, she gets in the car, they're following her, she drives on the highway, they're following her, and suddenly she realizes this is a dream. The moment she realizes this is a dream, so the mantra is, this is a dream, and in dream I can do anything. Right? You're free. In dream you're free. In reality you're not free. That's the idea we have, right? So that's the definition of Definition of reality, definition of seriousness is potential to have more problems, right? So, so for her was, this is a dream, in dream I can do anything. So she flew her car into the sky. Her car was flying and the, all the, the guys were stuck in a car in, on the highway, on the highway, they're stuck. So she, she looks down and she's feeling this deep sense of free liberation. And of course, you know, for us, we can talk about it, but she, the way she describes it is a very unique experience. And for us, or for Tibetan in general, in they, these kind of experiences, is that something deep, something deep change happens in her. So it's not like a just, just a dream, but some deep energetic, psychological shift 
happens in her, that she, this sense of being free from what she's afraid of, or free from those who are after her. That sense of freedom that she, was, she felt. And then, so if in, in a way, we think about when you, if you're analyzing a dream, you bring that dream back, and you probably you analyze for a long, long time. But maybe the effect of that transformation, what happened in dream, with the help of lucid dream, I, we think it's far more powerful than very analytical approach. This is also very energetic, physical also, some sensation deep inside. So that, that's one example. So idea of what is the, how you have a lucid dream, okay? So how you have a lucid dream, the practices of having a lucid dream, is not so much what you do in the night, right? Every night before you go to sleep. Uh, it's kind of sleep just happens. A dream, it's kind of, you are dreamt rather than you dream. Uh, it's, it's just something happens to you, but you don't really prepare. How many of you feel like you have a choice that uh, what kind of dreams you want to have tonight? Or if you have some kind of dream, do you feel like you have a choice to change your dreams in the night? Not very often, right? So, so in dream yoga practice, there's a few exercises that, that uh, I would recommend. So just exercise you can experiment. Exercise number one in order to have a lucid dream will be uh, looking at everything what you perceive as a dream. Okay, so right now, uh, if you are listening to me and you have this kind of atmosphere in this hall, and, uh, and look at yourself a little bit, how serious you are, how relaxed you are, how you're listening, how you're responding. You're just kind of a little bit stepping back, coming down, settling deep, opening up. And then you look, look at things, you listen, you hear. It's like a, what you're perceiving through your senses and through your mind, looking them as a dream, like a dream. It's like a little bit like a dream. That makes sense? So you say, it feels like a little bit like a dream, and you say, these, these are like a dream. It is like a dream. This is a dream. You can go anywhere from this is like a dream to this is a dream. Depends how brave you are. <laughs> right? So you said this is a dream. This is a dream. This is a dream. This is a dream. So you exercise this from morning until the evening many times throughout the, throughout the day, remembering that. Every time you get tense, very serious, and very dualistic, very judgmental, or, or, or you're running away, you're contracting, and at that, that very moment, you just feel the stillness, silence, look at the things, and you say, this is like a dream. So repeating that. So example is, it's like a creating a file. So every given moment in our day life, we are creating a file like in a computer. It's like automatically files are created. And every time each file shuts it down by itself, it, it says, do you want to save the file? And usually we say yes, and you say, what do you want to call it? You say, call it serious, <laughs> personal, deadline, urgency. I mean, you, most of the time, that's what we call them. So you, how many deadlines you have, how many serious files you have, how many... Uh, personal files you have, these all are like way of reality, it's too real. Too real in a sense, there are many of them are causes of your suffering and pain, because you, the way you see them. So when you, when you say save it, then you say what do you want to call it. Again, at that point, look at the file, Look at that meeting, look at that conversation. And then you say, it's a dream. It's a dream. If you're able to save that file as a dream, a serious dream where you felt threat, 
challenge, uh, scared. These files, when you when you're able to build a different relationship than what usually you would build and say it is a dream, then that file is saved as a dream. So that means in the night when you go to sleep, dream, maybe same something linked with that, the dream shows up. And the moment the dream shows up, what says the name in there? File name? This is a dream. So it's basically whole exercises and few exercises like that. Main thing is really like you're trying to take awakened information, bridging into the night consciously. That's what you're trying to do. And in short, that's what really you're trying to do. That makes sense? Like for you, most of the time that, of course, everyday experiences, you don't know which one is going to show up in the night, which, will, which one will produce a dream, make a dream, which one meant something more important to you, which one is more you're free of. We don't know. But those shows up in a dream, they mean something more to you on a personal level, more deeper level. It threatens you, it challenges you. You are not free from it. So those are what is going to show, show in dream. We know that those are the dream which is going to come, either emotion related, thoughts related, but we will not be conscious because we, during daytime, those, when those events happen, you are not conscious. If you are not aware of in those moments, you're le less likely to be aware in your dream when those events shows up, those emotion, particular emotion situation shows up. Does that make sense? So it's a question about really like a, how you want it to make, we'll come back. Okay. So it's a question about how you, during the daytime, every given moment, being aware and knowing that this might show up in a dream and trying to make some bridge, it's trying to make some bridge to the night. So exercise number, exercise number two, it's not just what you perceive, but something more which challenges you. Maybe uh, in Stanford, around here, you see a lot of bikes, but maybe one, one day you see a big dog or something like that. So a scary dog or something like that, or a little lion or something. Just imagine something that usually you don't see, very scary or something. When you perceive something like that, you're like a little bit shaken by it. Whatever, something a little bit shaken by, shaken by some situation, which you are not used to usually, in that very moment, you, you have to sit maybe a few minutes, five minutes. Don't let just that situation experience impact you and you just walk away. It's kind of hurt you and you walk away. But you process that emotion. You process that thought. And you, you clear that. Some degree you're trying to clear that by slowing down, being still, being silent, being open, be relaxed and looking at again from a more deeper place, more calm place, and then saying, wow, it was scary, but it's a dream. It was scary, but it was a dream. Rather than it was scary and then you carry that fear with you and do whatever you're doing continues. Not like that, just processing that. So that's the second exercise. Okay, so, so first, with all the perceptions that you're trying to see everything as a dream. Second, with something strong, react strong, something strong you react to, to look at them as a dream. Second. And the third one is before you go to sleep. So before you go to sleep, what do you usually do in before you go to sleep? You know, you're like half dead, tired, <laughs> throw everything, throw yourself on the bed, go to sleep. That's what we do, right? Most of the time, people, that's what we, people do. What, how did you went to sleep yesterday night? That's a probably a typical good example of every other night that you go to sleep. You don't prepare. Your agenda, your schedule stops, right? Moment you close your eyes in the bed, you stop. You don't say, okay, I'm going to calm down, I'm going to breathe deep, I'm going to be conscious, I'm going to 
look at my day, I see few things there are, what happened during the daytime, they are not well processed, I look at them again, process them well, clear them, breathe deep, and then go to sleep. And not carry any of those things into your sleep world, because you are, it's like a sacred world, it's like you're entering into the temple or something like that. We don't do that, we just take everything with us. And then all of those shows up. So we don't do So here, the third exercise is very much taking at least maybe five minutes. Right? Can you think about that? Can you take five minutes before you go to sleep? How do you do that? You look back the day, kind of rewind the tape fast back, look at all the things, and then specific things that you can see where something is not processed. Some conversations, some emails, some thoughts, some emotions, you look back, it's there. Maybe three of them there. So you look at them, you go deeper in your place, like in a more like a contemplative, contemplator on them. So usually most of the time we do like a very simple way, like three things I say, stillness in your body, so like silence in your speech, basically feeling the stillness in your body, feeling and being aware of the silence, that means mind is very quiet and calm, and spaciousness in your heart and the mind means keeping heart and the mind open, just maybe a few minutes, breathing deep. And then from that place, you look at the, your day and see some things which are not processed. You look at them. That was a really difficult meeting. But it's okay. Feeling some, some sense of okay because you're lo looking, feeling, relating from different place, more deeper place. That was okay. And... Uh, Maybe that meeting was not that bad. Maybe that meeting meant to happen, it happened. Maybe now we're over with it. Or maybe what I've learned from that. Maybe what I can do best out of that meeting, which was not good, but what I can do best out. So in some sense, from deeper place, build, processing it and building a positive relationship to it. And then having saying goodbye, some sense of. Best thing is to delete the file, okay? Second best thing, if you cannot delete the file, rename it, right? That you understand, right? Instead of saying, well, it's really horrible, and that person is, I knew he's a horrible person, now I know he's horrible, it's confirmed, and, <laughs> and it looks like this person will be horrible for the rest of his life. <laughs> so not like getting confirming, 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 but in the end, it's not gonna destroy your night or your per probably even your life. So, but re reversing that and processing it, and then some sense of peace with that event, emotions, thought, some sense of more peace inside, and then go to sleep. So that's the third exercise, okay? Perception, second reaction, third, before you go to sleep, like processing the day. And the last one is when you wake up in the morning, when you wake up in the morning, basically you look what happened. Was it a successful dream yoga practice? What happened? Oh, yes, you know, I was, I was able to be lucid. I flew and I was traveling where every place I wanted to travel. I did what I wanted to do. And there were some attacks and I changed everything. Well, the line was there. I made it into a flower. I don't know. <laughs> Fantastic things. You can, all the possibility you can do. So, or maybe, oh, it's not so good. Or maybe what so-called dream of, or sleep of ignorance. That means you went to sleep, no clue until you wake up. <laughs> That's called sleep of ignorance. Or, yeah, so, so basically you look back, so there's a two thing, if there's a success, you, it's like a celebration, like a sense of joy, uh, some sense of connection with the joy to the success. And if it's not success, 
reinforce your practice. Say, say it's not a kind of feeling bad or something like that. Just say, it did not happen. I'm going to try. And it will happen. Some sense of having, some, building some sense of trust to your ability to have a lucid dream. So that, these are the four uh, simple exercises that you can do. Okay? Um, let's say once you have a lucid dream, then what do you do? Once you have a lucid dream, what do you do? It's like this girl. If she, maybe she did, did not need to do anything. She could have transformed all these people into beautiful god and goddesses, angels. But she did not do that, right? She was not able to do that, but at least she was able to fly. So there's a certain degree of what you are able to and what you are not able to. It very much depends on how flexibility you are. Maybe you are on the fifth floor and then somebody is chasing you and then you're wanting, it's okay, I can jump. It's a dream, I can jump, but I prefer not to jump. <laughs> right? So you see, you're, you know it's a dream, you know it's okay to jump, but at the same time, you prefer not to jump. That means confidence level is not completely there, right? You, so this is the same thing happens in our life. So uh, let's say in a, during the waking, waking life, any transition of your life, when you have to make a decision, how do you make a decision? Do you make a decision like you, you feel like you're, you're, you're making a decision, you're forced to make a decision, you're making a decision because you're afraid, because of fear, you're making decision because of you uh, hopeful. You're making decision because what? You see, usually the best decisions are made when you are fully open of the situation. Open, I said, fully aware of the situation, right? So in the, during the daytime, what we say, awareness. In the night, we say lucid dreams. It's not, nothing different. You can have a nightmares during the daytime, but if you are aware of it, you can change them. If you are not aware of them, they affect you. Every situation during the daytime, same thing can happen to 10 different people. Half will respond. It, it makes perfect. They, they get benefit from it. They use it. And half, they get scared. And half, it destroys them. Same situation. Right? So what makes the differences is they are being conscious and aware of it. So awareness of during the daytime helps awareness in the nighttime to have a lucid dream. So our whole idea in a lucid dreaming is basically being free. So it talks about, like uh, in a Maju, in one of the texts, it talks about 11 different things you can do. You can, if you are feeling stuck in terms of very slow, you can change the speed. If you are, um, uh, if it's about size, then you can, become bigger. If, you are, if it's about speed, you can go faster. If it's about quality, you can change the quality. If you're about transformation, like a changing, if you're dreaming as a human, you can become eagle or something like that. If you are, if your tiger is coming and trying to attack you, you change the tiger into your puppy or your dog or your, your loving cat or something like that. So this every this ability to transform things, exercising full possibility of transforming things. That's what it, it's tried in the sleep yoga. It's encouraged to try that. Uh, I think it's not so much about some, doing so many different things. It's mainly is about ability to do it. Not feeling being stuck in something that you feel you cannot move. It stops your flow of your life, your existence, your potentiality, your creativity by seeing something very serious. So the lucid dream changes everything, okay? So, yeah, maybe then we can, um, I'll, maybe I'll take a few questions now and then we'll do a short practice. Then we'll come back, okay? You, you want to ask something? Well, she's busy. <laughs> um, can you speak a little louder? Why we, why, um, question is why we are trying to see things as a dream? Because according to the Buddhism teaching, it is like a dream. 
So it, according to teaching, it's like a, everything what you see is real. Real what you say is real. This is, this is unreal as a dream. Dream as real as this, this reality. So they, in a, some sense, it's, it's, a, it's like a dream. And uh, in, a, in a waking dream, we suffer a lot. In the night dream, if you're lucid, we can suffer less. If you're suffering less in night dream by being aware and conscious, then you will also have an impact that impacts your way you experience the day. So that, I mean, basically, like what is real? What is real for you, right? Or what is serious for you? People, people like they say something like they are very happy in relationship for many, many years, and then they say, let's get serious. What does that mean? Let's have a problem. <laughs> or at least potential to have a problem, right? That's basically serious. That's what it does. It doesn't change anything, but it just brings more narrow downs, limits things. Or, I mean, I just give the examples like you're renting a place for a long time, you're enjoying, enjoying the apartment, you just pay the monthly rent, and then you save money, save money, save money, finally able to buy the apartment. The moment you sign, the sign, you own it, and you come back to the same apartment where you're living for the last 15 years, you begin to see a problem in the wall, <laughs> problem in the roof, problem in the floor, a problem in the kitchen. Where does all this problem arises? <laughs> same apartment before it was not there. You are seeing through a different eye now, with the self-grasping eye. S seriousness is there. It's the sense of forever, it's mine, is there. And that seriousness changed, you begin to see everything different, same apartment. So idea here is to see everything as a dream in the waking state. And here, exercise is really trying to have a more lucid dream. That's the main purpose. In principle, they really help. The waking exercise help night. Night realization helps the day. So cycle day helping night, night helping day. Day helping night, night helping day. Or they influence negatively the night. All the bad experiences of thoughts, emotion, exhaustions, distortedness, it interferes your pattern of sleep. Don't sleep good, many breaks, nightmares, and, and you get up in the morning exhausted, tired, you're not functioning well, your not, you're not, mood is not good, you're tired. So all these things, you're affecting your decision-making process of the day, bad cycle. That, that's the idea. Yes? Is there a state of uh, being lucid or awareness in non-dreaming sleep? Non-dreaming non uh, non dreaming sleep. Yeah. So in, in the in tradition, we don't call it lucid dream. That's not a dream. It was a non-dreaming state, right? But there is a sense of lucidity. It's called sleep, sleep of clear light. It's called sleep of clear light. So, in, our, in the Tibetan tradition, <clears throat> there's a, which something in the West don't talk. In the West, there's a lot of dream analysis, you know, Freud and Jung, and many, many different approaches to dream analysis, but sleep is not discussed. So in, in Buddhism, this whole another chapter is the sleep, because the whole idea is non-dreaming state, they are, there's a possibility to be conscious there is a possibility to, to be aware. And that awareness is called sleep of clear light. So basically, the idea is practices of light in sleep state. And the whole idea of doing these ex exercises is because of preparation for the death. Because the moment you die, same process is going to happen. So if you have a success in your dream, or idea of pardo, right? Part of the intermediate state of the death. The whole idea of pardo is you have more chances of success in the pardo if you have success in your sleep yoga and dream yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Can you please talk about the relationship of Buddhism with the idea of control? For me, lucid dreaming sounds like you're trying to gain control of your environment and your emotions. But on the other hand, mindfulness is about letting go of control. So just that stark contrast between control 
Yeah, so I question is about, you know, mindful letting go and here, here is some sense of approach and these practices seeing some sense of control. So what is the uh, differences or uh, the different approaches of the practice? You know, like I saw, uh, for example, idea of sleep yoga practice uh, is you, you have to let go of control. So idea of letting go of control is not easy. You know, idea of let go, it's not easy. You know, so some sense, many, there are many exercises, even mindfulness, I mean traditional mindfulness, so not the so much spoken mindfulness, the Western, <laughs> West, now mindfulness becomes something different. Tradi traditional sense of mindfulness practice does have an initially control. Because people look at the image, very sharp image, they will focus like this, very much deep focus, or they focus on uh, breath, uh, a sphere of light, they will focus on something. Um, you focus on something long enough because mind goes so fast, right? So if you focus on something deep enough, then some point the effortful focus loosen up. Then you find non-effort or non-effort com contemplation. So what we call uh, ob uh, concentration with the attribute or concentration without attribute is called. It's like a driving, learning a driving. So can you just let go of, did you, when you learn, learn did you drive? When you learn the driving, did you let go of right from the beginning or you focused? And now you can do your lipstick and hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it is. <laughs> So, so question is, when I say this is a dream, this is a temporary or real? Yeah, so basically, uh, when we do exercise here, it's, it's some sense of, it's like a little bit triggers the day, how you store information. When every experience is a store, you're sending a message. If I'm sending an envelope, right, letter inside, then in the outside I write a little note. So I, when I send the letter, all the envelope goes there, when, but also the note goes there together. And we, people will say, oh, they look at the note. So note, they, when we say this is a dream, this is, this is a little bit like a note or name of the file. So it's, it's a way to have a lucid dream. Main purpose is the way to have a lucid dream. But in principle, philosophical background of it, it says it is like a dream. This is like a dream. I know we have a problem with that idea, I <laughs> understand. <laughs> this is the dream. Yes, please. When you speak about the care of the body and what we eat, <coughs> maybe we ingest, and how Tibetan Buddhism addresses that as part of preparation for the contemplative practices, including what you're speaking that if someone has had alcohol and chocolate and a big heavy meal and then goes to bed, so how do they fit together? Yeah, so a question is about uh, food, taking care of the body uh, in order to have a deeper contemplative experience or dream, right? Sleep, yeah. So yes, in a Tibetan tradition, uh, you, you're not, you need to keep uh, evening meal very light, like you no know, alcohol or, if, uh, or, or very little alcohol. Or some, some cases, some people wear a wind disorder. They, in Tibetan, they make it, uh, a little alcohol also. They put a little butter, sugar, mix it. It's also like as a medicinal. Uh, so basically, yes, food is pays a lot of attention. And also there are physical exercises, like we call salong. So your movement, you use, using these exercises to open different channels. Uh, so, uh, uh, and even the position when you, how you go to sleep, uh, even uh, how you imagine visualization, for example, uh, you're supposed to visualize a green goddess, so green goddess. So uh, traditionally green goddess is somebody who is like a mother who puts you to sleep. So you have a, you go to sleep, there's a green, beautiful green goddess reading your story, right? <laughs> so not reading a story, but she's there as a guard, guard protecting you. So one time I was in a, um, 
in Mexico in a television place. So I, they asked me to come and talk about the dream. But then, then they were talking about where, I don't know where all the information comes from. They said, you're, if you wear a green pajamas, uh, you will sleep better. <laughs> so I thought, maybe oh, that makes sense, kind of, you know. So I, exposure of colors, you know, which kind of room you sleep, you're in a red room or something, it will impact differently. So what kind of color you're exposed to, or what kind of, how much food you have, how, or what position you to go to sleep, how energetically f clear you feel. They all, there are so many different things matters. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A lot of the examples you gave from lucid dreaming were about avoiding emotions of pain and suffering and, and, uh, and coming to terms with the negative. Can you talk about the role of the positive emotions and positive joy that you feel uh, when lucid dreaming? Of not necessarily avoiding those, but actually taking some of those emotions of joy and being able to recreate them. Can, can you? He'd like you to speak to the emotion of joy that you referenced can arise in the lucid dream. And when you have been experiencing that, how you, what you might do with that, uh, extending it throughout your life. Joy? How to harvest the joy from the lucid dream and relate to it yeah. for the rest of your life. Yeah, so first, joy. Is, is, is a good, right? The is, is question is clear. So first, like a joy, opposite of joy is what is it? Sadness. Okay. So if, you, if somebody is very frequently sad, that it, when you're frequently sad, it occupies a space. Sad, emotion sadness is occupying a particular space. So when, when you're conscious, like when you're lucid dreaming, if it's in the night dream, sad dream, if you're conscious of that, you're able to clear that. If you're not sleeping, if you're in a waking state, right this very moment, is, some of us might be very sad, but you're not aware. If you moment you are aware that you're sad, relax, it's like bringing the light. We say bringing the light of awareness on the darkness of the sadness. Bringing the light of awareness to the darkness of sadness. The sadness clears. That means new space is there. In that new space, if you familiar enough, then joy spontaneously arises. The word spontaneously arises is important because most of the time we make joy. We re there's a reasoning behind joy. But the spontaneous joys are more joy kind of happens because its cause conditions are there. Once joy arises, then you, again, once again, if you're, like for example, some of you might be very happy right now. If you, then you have to know, oh, I'm very happy. I feel blessed. I'm, I'm feeling wonderful. And then you are, you, 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 you recognize that emotion then you say, I want to allow it. I want to, to express through my physical movement. I want to express that through my voice. I want to express through my communication to somebody. I want to write to somebody, text somebody. Expressing out, allowing to express out those joy with awareness, which is like a lucid dream again. Aware, like, this, like this girl, she decided to fly. You decided to send a text to somebody. But that's the process. But sending text is important. It's an expression of joy. It's, it's like a breathe. If you could breathe, if you don't breathe completely out, it's not fun. You go, <laughs> that's fun. Expressing joy out is breathing completely. That's fun. So, Exercise, we say, expressing it out through your body, through your speech, through your mind. Through three doors, we call it. That's important. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll come back to some questions. Okay, last one, then we'll do a little meditation. When it comes to interpretation and lucid dreams, um, and like the process of it in the morning, um, is it possible to 
should we avoid um, analyzing or trying to notice patterns or like of the symbolism of this? Um, or you know, would you suggest that we just like notice and let it go? Yeah. Okay, so the question is, when in the morning when we have a dream, should we analyze it or should we just let go, right? In the bottom line. So both two approaches, okay? So uh, one approach is, of course, dream like a meaning. We, why you analyze? Because you think there is some meaning. Why there is some meaning? Because you have built, you have built the meaning. We make the meanings. Col different cultures make me different meaning about different symbolism. Ultimately, there's no meaning. They all are just, right? So it's just each culture, each tradition means, one, one culture means something very positive, another culture means something very negative. You impute those meanings, you create those meanings. Once you have created those meanings, the meaning has impact over you. If you have a positive meaning, you have a positive impact. If you have a negative meaning, negative impact over you. You are the creator of your dream and meaning and everything. So be a good creator, basically, right? <laughs> so once you have created all those things, rules and regulations, and then you need to be, you, you need to analyze. Because some, like in the West, people like analyze a lot. And East, we don't analyze that much. I met one woman, and she said she's, she was very proud. She said I have been, uh, she's doing a Jungian work. She said I've been analyzing this one single dream for 15 years. <laughs> But she was very proud. And for us, you know, wow, you're stuck in one dream for 15 years? <laughs> and you're very proud of it? <laughs> so it's, it's a very much, it's a very individual thing, approach of like talking about, like her question about letting go or control. So control is one way, because we know how to control. Sometimes some, some degree of having some control help us. But ultimately, not con controlling is not the solution. But control, for some people, letting go is just an idea. They cannot do it. It's not possible to do it. And so, so some control, it's called, nat it's called effortful awareness, natural awareness, ultimate awareness. Think about that. Effortful awareness means you have to be reminded. You have to some beeper, you have to have a beeper. Be aware, okay, be aware. Right? You need a beeper to be aware. And then, and every time it's hard to be aware. At some point, you don't need a beeper and suddenly just you're more aware, you're aware, you're aware, you're aware. And then some point, you don't know how not to be aware. You are aware all the time. So there's, when that happens, it's called, there's no session of meditation. There's no meditation. Because everything is meditation. The break is not there anymore. So, ultimate goal is that. But in the beginning, you need some, some uh, steps of guidance and focus, attention, uh, some control necessary. Okay? So, uh, talking about that, we're going to do a little bit of effort, but very little effort. <laughs> So just sit comfortably. So you can breathe in deep and hold like here in this area, right? Heart heart chakra. Hold and re inhale again. Just usually we don't inhale completely, so Inhale and re-inhale, another short one, fully, then hold again. Hold as long as you can with the full attention and awareness there. When you cannot hold, slowly, gently, deep breathe out from your nostril. All the way down. Fully exhalation. Repeat this five times so that you can rest deep and exhale all the stale breath, energy that you're holding this moment in your body, in breath, in mind. Clear that. 
five times. One last time, breathe in deep, re-inhale, hold, hold as long as you can, and gently breathe it out, completely, and rest, and breathe normal, deep. Now, the awareness of the body, so be aware of your body. So bring your mind completely in your body, from the sole of the feet until to the crown, like a scanning from all the way up slowly. In any place you feel pain, blockages, some effort, lack of flowing. Bring your full awareness there, the light of your awareness there, and clear the darkness of obscuration or the wind, clear that, by simply being aware, being fully aware, conscious. Then move up slowly, rest of your body. Like a scanning, go all the way up, and this wherever pain, tension, blockages you feel in your body, breathe from that place, bring the light of awareness at that place, and allow that energy to clear through breath, obscuration to clear through the awareness and rest deeper into the stillness, continue as if you are preparing to go to sleep tonight.
Now, bring your attention to the throat, throat chakra. And be aware of the silence. Silence around you, within you. Awareness of silence. Feeling the silence. Resting deep in the silence. And whatever the voices of pain, challenges, noises, allow them to dissolve in this vast inner silence and rest continuously in that silence. Just continuously remember to breathe deep, not hold, and feel silence, rest in the silence. There is a difference between being quiet and being aware of the silence. When you're aware of the silence, it's a powerful, it's like a possessing a chocolate or tasting a chocolate. Awareness of the silence, not just quiet, being quiet. Third and the last, bring your attention to your heart. Feel, imagine it's like a crystal clear sky. 
open. Awareness of spaciousness, awareness of openness, awareness of boundless sacred space of your heart. There's also differences, heart being open and how you are aware of that openness, big different. So be aware of that sacred space. As you're aware of the sacred space, every wound, pain, conflict in your heart will dissolve because of power of that awareness of sacred space. Allow them to dissolve, rest in that space as if you are going to fall asleep. Following sleep in that unbounded sacred space where the full awareness, light of full awareness. And we say clear light sleep. Clear means that sacred space. Light means the awareness of that sacred space. When you're experiencing some connection to it, you allow yourself to fall asleep. Okay, now you can open your eye. How are we doing with the time? Ten minutes ten. Ten minutes remaining. Ten, ten minute remaining? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, can you imagine going to sleep with these three little meditation we just did before you go to sleep? Right? So basically, you're, because you're, when you go to sleep, you're taking your body with you, right? <laughs> your speech, all the voices in your head, you're taking that with you. And all your feelings and emotions and thoughts, what you're feeling inside, you're taking that with you. So these, either in all the emotions, feelings in your body, or in your heart, or in your voices, they're all you're taking in, in your sleep. So these are going to impact your sleep and impact your dream. Does that make sense? So if you don't want it to impact that, that means you're, you're not trying to force while you're sleeping, you're trying to, trying to figure out in dream and sleep itself, harder. But you prepare before you go to sleep. So best thing is holding this, some sense of stillness in your body, and silence, experience of presence of silence, presence of openness in your heart throughout the day, a little bit, little bit. Few minutes here and a few minutes there throughout the day. If not possible, at least before you go to sleep. Just what we just did. So if you do that, basically what, what is happening is you're not carrying all the stuff of the day. It's like a processing before you go to sleep. And you will Sleep for sure better, more chances of better dreams, restful. If you do have some difficult one, possible you're able to transform them with the help of lucid dream. Okay? So maybe just a few questions before we finish. Okay. What, what if you are dreaming? 
doing this and you're so tired that you're <laughs> so what about if you're really tired, you just fall asleep? So how you were able to go on your bed? Are you able to walk or has to get on your bed? Right? You will not fall down outside the bedroom, right? <laughs> so you do have some energy to go to the bed, bathroom and everything. So that means you have enough energy to practice. And also, in a way, if you're falling asleep very fast, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Because it's not a question about how long, it's a question about be entering, in a, entering through the right door. Right? When you, the moment you fall asleep, it's not like how long you're coming from, but just the last, last moment before you sleep. What thought you are carrying, what emotion you are carrying, what kind of energy you are carrying in your body, those matters. They say even, they say somebody, when somebody dies, it's the same thing. The process of the death matters very much last moments of that death. Where they're looking, they're looking at somewhere. They're looking at the image where the child, children's image or something like attachment. Where they look or it, it matters a lot. So last moment, it was very peaceful, calm, quiet, more warm. People die smoothly. So we have Every single night we have experience to die properly, someday when we will die. <laughs> Rehearsal. <laughs> yes. Oh, um, so if you have the ability to lose a dream, but then you forget that you're in a dream and you lose your ability, what do you... So, like your, your example with the girl in the car and her car flies and then if she forgets that she's in a dream she will lose the ability to fly right so how do you regain that when you forget you're in a dream so can, is there is like about a remembering dream if i understand your question it's that if she is in a lucid dreaming state and then in that same night falls out of the lucid dreaming how would she come back into the lucid dream state? Once she fell out, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much you can do that time. It's like a, if in your final test here, what if you, you know, you have to prepare there before, not like last minute, it's hard to do things there. So, 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 so just, uh, yeah, again, so if you during the daytime, if you're aware, if you lose awareness, what do you do? Trying to be aware. So if you're able to, in, during the daytime, many times, like for example, I'm feeling a little bit angry, I'm trying to say something mean, and then I'm conscious that I'm angry, then I'm very aware that I'm going to say what I'm going to say, then I recognize that's not the right thing to do, and I change, Breathe it out, feel a little bit more space, better understanding, see something more positive, feel more, some empathy, then I message is different. Maybe then I feel more, say something more right, something positive, something more productive. Then because of I'm aware, I'm able to change something. So sometimes when you're really, really aware and with the confidence, you can change so much things. Sometimes it's hard. They all depend on level of confidence on your awareness. So if at night is the same thing. Yeah. Is it best to do these meditation exercises when you're like sitting up and then go to sleep? Or can you just do this when you're laying? Yeah. So the question is, is it better to sit upward position or lie down? So upward position is uh, recommended. If, if, if you... I don't think she's going to do that, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if if you are not have energy, then lying down is okay. Yes. So. Can you do that? 
when you wake in the morning to write down your memory of the dream in what it would be called a dream journal and your recommendation or your views on that practice of writing it. Yeah. Well, I think um, it depends on personally. I, I write down, and uh, but I write down only when I feel it's a significant dream. Uh, Sometimes you know you go to sleep and you're traveling in India, your mosquito bites, and you have a nightmare, and you want to write down the mosquito biting dreams. You know, I don't know. <laughs> You can, but uh, you know, sometimes there are, there are the dreams which go very samsaric, very discomfort. But some, some dreams that you can feel that they're really like a, something deep. And uh, then when I feel something like that, yes, I write down. And, uh, but then also trying to, under, trying to understand a little bit, question about meaning, what it means to me. Uh, if, I'm, I'm, if I'm really, really very open, I'm free from my conditions, they don't mean anything. But then, if I'm conditioned, I'm weak, and I look for meanings in my life all the time, and especially I'm afraid of bad meanings, I need some good meanings, then I have to analyze whatever that means, because it could mean something to me, right? Like uh, my, my family, my sisters, they all practice, but they, they don't really understand the principle of the dream yoga practice, but they're always very curious about when they have some dream. What does that mean? Does it really mean something dangerous? What should I do? You know, that's not how we, we do, right? Okay. Um, thank you so much for your talk, Rinpoche. Um, I was wondering if you would like to use this uh, dream yoga as a spiritual practice and you can have a lucid dream. Is there um, something you recommend for what we transform? Or uh, you talked about you know, your student who is transforming her fear from the daytime is there some other advice you could give if you would like to use lucid training as a spiritual practice, not just in preparation for death, but is there something more we can do? Yeah. So the question is basically what, what kind of other things you can transform through the dream yoga practice. So the principle is very simple, right? The principle is that what is believed in these teachings, as a human, we are like a, who we are is not what we really think who we are. Who we are, are is we are like this unbounded space, the infinite possibility, and our capacity, creativity is infinite. This is who we are, but we, not, we all feel like that. We feel different limitations. Diff some people feel a lot, some people feel less, but we feel limitations. Limitations to being from who we are. So the bottom line is the exercise of this dream yoga is to to free from those limitations, which in dream they appear, like this girl's case, she's, been, she's afraid of being, maybe in real life, maybe somebody is after her, maybe she's just, she's creating situations like that. Many times we create situations like that. Like even, you know, Carl Jung said that Hitler, before, in his patients, there was collective dreams, they were like, almost like producing Hitler, right? So, Collective unconscious creates circumstances, energy, creates the reality. I mean, look at the political things, everything's what's happening, we create them. Right? So, we, so dream is the same thing, we create them. So, idea here is to really, whatever in your own full, uh, in your own, I say, level of awareness, whatever you feel that something is interfering your full potentiality, and uh, which could be many different things. So it's step by step trying to be free from them, being conscious during the daytime, being conscious through the lucid. If that appears in a dream, work there. If that appears during the daytime, work there. And in the Buddhism, they say there is 84,000 afflictions. That means in the end, you have to clear 84,000 afflictions. We will not count them, right? So. For us, what you do is, whatever you see, whatever you feel, whatever you notice, work on them, clear them, and just listen to them. Listen to your dreams, you know. People, some people say they're, they're having a reoccurring dream very often. I said, why have a reoccurring dream? Because like, you're a bad listener. <laughs> right? If you listen and take care of it, they will not repeat again. 
at least you will be thankful they're repeating again that you until you get it, right? So they're repeating, just get it, get it sooner. Not let it repeat too much because sometimes real like nightmares with people you see, like this girl who's seeing people chasing her, sometimes happens in a dream again and again and again. And, and then some point it doesn't happen in a dream. These people will move in the next neighbor. <laughs> They'll find out your address. They'll try to meet you somewhere in some public places and trying to trying to get to know interfere your life. This is this is what is believed. What is deep and unconscious, how we experience, how we think, how we feel, how we project, at some point we create a whole reality like that. So be before they become real, delete them. Okay? Thank you.